during the 1990s, I wrote a couple of books on leadership. And while I was writing those books, I was doing a lot of thinking about the global economy because it was apparent to me during that time that not only was the global economy doing well, but it was poised to do well for some time to come unless something unusual happened. So I started looking for uh, issues that might arise that had the potential to cause the global economy to slow down. And it became apparent fairly quickly that the issue that had the greatest potential to bring the global economy to a standstill was the situation in the Middle East. And so I started looking at the Middle East very carefully. At, uh, I made my first trip to the Middle East in 1998, and during the last nine years, I've been over there, I don't know how many times, but a lot. In fact, I spent seven weeks in Israel and Jordan in the fall of uh, 2006. Well, I ended up gathering a lot of information that I can share with you that will help you to understand where we are uh, in the Middle East and what is likely to happen next. As I mentioned in, in a previous blog, the facts that people typically read about in the newspapers or see on television are not really facts. They're basically opinions that people have shared over the years that have uh, been substituted for facts. Well, over the next several days, I'm going to be providing some information for you that I hope you find useful. And if you do, please let me know. My goal with these blogs is to provide information that you will find not just interesting but helpful. Okay. As you know, Condoleezza Rice uh, is in the Middle East right now. And she's moving toward uh, a peace treaty with uh, between the Palestinians and the Israeli. And in fact, they're getting ready to... Uh, to have a summit meeting between the Palestinians and the Israeli. One fact you need to understand is that the Palestinian Charter, to this day, as far as I know, still includes articles that call for the destruction of Israel. Now, I'm going to read those articles to you from the Charter that will help you understand what I'm talking about. This is Article 7 from the Palestinian Charter. It is a national duty to bring up individual Palestinians in an Arab revolutionary in an Arab revolutionary manner. He must be prepared for armed struggle and ready to sacrifice his wealth and his life. This is Article Nine. Armed struggle is the only way to liberate Palestine. This is Article Fifteen. The liberation of Palestine aims at the elimination of Zionism in Palestine. The Arab nation must mobilize all its military, human, and moral and spiritual capabilities to participate actively with the Palestinian people in the liberation of Palestine. And, by the way, the, the, the word there, Zionism, that is a surrogate for Israel. This is Article 20. Claims of historical or religious ties of Jews with Palestine are incompatible with the facts of history. This is Article 21. The Arab Palestinian people reject all solutions which are substitutes for the total liberation of Palestine. This is Article 22. It, referring to Israel, is racist and fanatic in its nature, aggressive, expansionist, Colonialist in its aim, a base for world imperialism placed strategically in the midst of the Arab homeland to combat the hopes of the Arab nation. The liberation of Palestine will destroy the Zionist and imperialist presence. Okay, from that you can see that the intention of the Palestinian uh, Charter is to establish that the elimination of, Pal of Zionism in what they refer to as the Arab homeland, is a primary objective. There's no denying that. That's been true since 1964 when the PLO was created. Now, 
When Bill Clinton was President of the United States in 1998, he held the Y uh, Plantation Summit. And during that summit, issues arose. And one of the issues was the fact that there continued to be these articles in the charter of the Palestinian PLO, which called for the elimination of Israel, the destruction of Israel. And so uh, after, during the Y River uh, agree, uh, discussions, it was decided that those articles had to be removed. Now, I want to show you how deceptive information you read in, in the press can be, except this is not from a, a newspaper. This is from a book. The title of the book is The Missing Piece, Inside the Story of the Fight for Middle East Peace, and it's written by Dennis Ross, who is U.S. Envoy to the Middle East from 1988 to 2000. He was uh, involved during uh, the Bush administration and both Clinton ad- terms. In 1998, as December of 1998, actually, President Clinton went to uh, Israel for the formal ceremony during which the Palestinian National Conference or Committee would remove these articles that were so offensive to the Israeli people, the articles calling for the destruction of Israel. Now, I'm going to read to you one paragraph from his book, Dennis Ross' book. It's on page 486. And, uh, and it'll just give you some idea how excited uh, President Clinton was and Dennis Ross and all of the party with President Clinton in Israel at the time, how excited they were to have these, these articles removed. And I'm just going to read the, the paragraph to you, then I'll share some other information. Sandy said to the president, now Sandy Berger is who he's referring to, Sandy said to the said. Sandy said the president is napping, and I suggest you ride with him to the site and tell him what he must do. I did so. Whether he actually told Arafat, I do not know. But Arafat did exactly what we asked and produced a stunning response from the hall. As I sat watching nervously, he called for the PNC to reaffirm his letter, and about three-quarters of the over 500 present raised their hands. With their hands still raised, just to leave no doubt, they rose as one, stood, leaving around a quarter of those in attendance sitting, sitting on the side with Martin next to me and Aaron beside me. I turned to, I turned to them and said, we did it. Uh, the statement, we did it, meaning we were successful in getting the PNC to remove the articles calling for the destruction of Israel from the PA Charter, the Palestinian Charter. Now, this is from Dennis Ross' book. Here is a man who spent uh, 12 years of his life as the U.S. envoy to the Middle East. If you watch Fox News, he's a regular uh, guest on Fox News talking about the Middle East because he's regarded as an expert. What makes that so interesting, that paragraph so interesting, is that Yasser Arafat couldn't produce the vote in the PNC that he was looking for. So they filled the room full of people who were not members of the PNC. And those are the people who voted, people who were not members of the Palestinian National Committee are the ones who voted. In other words, the uh, articles calling for the destruction of Israel were never removed from the uh, Palestinian Charter. And here we have a book, and the book was written by Dennis Ross, regarded as one of the most, probably the most knowledgeable person in the United States, at least, about the uh, situation in the Middle East. And here he has a uh, 2004 book in which he is claiming that these articles were removed, and in fact, they were never removed. Now, In 2004, in December of 2004, I attended the Herzliya conference looking at the balance of Israel's national security. And um, Katie and I have been blessed to get to know some very interesting people in Israel. And some of the people we've gotten to know are heavily involved in Israel's security. So I, uh, during this conference, I met a lot of people. And uh, we saw uh, every living prime minister and past prime minister in Israel, 
the leaders of the military, leaders in government, uh, and leaders in business, we saw people in Israel who were making things happen. And um, so I talked to one of the people there about whether or not these articles were actually removed from the PA Charter. And he told me he didn't think so, but what he would do, he was going to have the expert on that matter in the Israeli security apparatus get back with me. And I'm not going to tell you this person's name. And in fact, I'm not going to share names with you when I'm, if I feel like it might be sensitive. I'll just tell you what they told me. This is a letter I received on January the 10th, 2005 from the person within the Israeli security apparatus who's most knowledgeable about the Palestinians. And I'm going to read this letter to you verbatim. The Palestinian Basic Constitution was written along with the Palestinian Covenant in 1964 when the PLO was established. According to Article 33 of the Covenant, the Charter shall not be amended save by vote of a majority of two-thirds of the total membership of the National Congress of the Palestine Liberation Organization, taken at a special session convened for that purpose. The PLO did change the covenant once in history. When the PLO was formed under Jordanian and Egyptian auspices in 1964, the covenant specifically stated that the PLO was no terri- that the PLO has no territorial claims on the West Bank and Gaza. This was changed in 1968 in the wake of the Six-Day War. Therefore, the mechanism for formally amending the covenant was changed. In his letter of September the 9th, 1993, to Prime Minister Rabin, Yasser Arafat stated that those articles which deny Israel's right to exist or are inconsistent with the PLO's new commitments to Israel following their mutual recognition are no longer valid. On April 24, 1996, the Palestinian National Council, convening in Gaza, voted 504 to 54 with 14 abstentions as follows. The Palestinian National Charter is hereby amended by canceling the articles that are contrary to the letters exchanged between the PLO and the Government of Israel, 9-10 September 1993 assigns its legal committee with the task of redrafting Palestinian National Charter in order to present it to the first session of the Palestinian Central Council. On December 14, 1998, the Palestinian National Council, in accordance with the Y Memorandum, convened in Gaza in the presence of U.S. President Clinton and voted to reaffirm this decision. At the close of the Palestinian National Council session, a final statement was issued which included all of the session's decisions. The decision to cancel the covenant was not mentioned at all. When several PNC members were asked about the identity of the articles which were canceled, they did not know how exactly to respond. Each of them had a different version regarding to the number of articles and their identity. Sometime later, at a meeting with Libyan ruler Muammar Gaddafi, Yasser Arafat denied that the covenant had been canceled and claimed that nothing had happened, though afterwards there was a PLO member who denied Arafat's remarks. In any case, Gaddafi was apparently convinced that the covenant had not been canceled and he did not return to criticizing the PLO over its cancellation. Arafat consistently evaded questions regarding the issue. Since then, not only has the PNC legal committee not met and not discussed and certainly not proposed a new version of the Covenant's articles. But Arafat announced that it would never come about, and nothing would be done until Israel itself adopts the Constitution. In any case, the real test is if the PLO still uh, presents the original Covenants to its members. To the best of my knowledge, it has not been amended in any official document. Okay, I'm going to stop there for today. I realize that there's a lot of information I'm going to share with you over the next several days. And I don't want any one of these blogs to be too long. And already I think this one is long enough. I, this, what I've shown you today, 
I've shown you that there are or there exist articles in the Palestinian Charter which call for the elimination of Israel and for the armed struggle against the Zionist presence in the Middle East. I showed you that Dennis Ross, who is supposedly the most knowledgeable person in the United States about these issues in the Middle East, was so deceived that he included erroneous information in his book titled The Missing Peace, The Inside Story of the Fight for Peace in the Middle East. And I've shown you that the expert, and I, again, I wish I could share this man's name with you. I'm not going to because I don't want to put him at risk. That the person within the Israeli security apparatus who's most knowledgeable about Palestinian issues explains that nothing has happened. Now, that letter was written in, 19, in 2005. This is January 2007. As far as I know, nothing has changed since that time. In fact, I'll assure you that nothing has changed since that time. I told you in my blog yesterday or the other day that uh, a lot of information out there is just plain wrong. And I'm telling you that a lot of information out there is not just wrong, but it is being touted by some of the people who should be knowledgeable as being correct. It is not correct. To this day, the Palestinian Charter still calls for the destruction of Israel. And that is a simple, verifiable fact if you go to the right sources.